Hi everyone and welcome to Math Sucks. This video is going to help you pass algebra. In this video we're going to go over geometric sequences by looking at the formula, solving some quick examples, and then trying a harder word problem at the end. So what are geometric sequences? Geometric sequences are a sequence of numbers that form a pattern when the same number is multiplied or divided to each term. So we have this example here. So if you notice, if you try to look at how these numbers are related to each other, we have the sequence 4, 8, 16, 32. So if you look at how 4 is related to 8, notice that 4 times 2 is equal to 8. 8 times 2 is equal to 16. 16 times 2 equals 32. So notice we're multiplying 2 to each term. So if we wanted to find the next term in the sequence, we would just multiply 2 times 32, which would give us 64. So we can easily see what the next term is here, but what if we wanted to find the 15th term? So this is the first term, the second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term, but we want the 15th term. So how do we do that? That's where the geometric sequence formula would come in. So let's take a look at that. So the, so the geometric sequence formula is a sub n, so let's just write down what each part of this means. So we have a sub n, so that's just how you say this, this little n here. And this is just the answer we're trying to find. And this right here is just the first term of our sequence, and it's pronounced a sub 1. And this is the first term in our sequence. So if you look at our sequence, you'll see that the first term is just 4. So we know that this is 4. So this is 8 times r. So r is something that is specific to geometric sequences only. It is called the common ratio. So what this is, is the number that we are multiplying or dividing to each term in the sequence. So in the sequence we were just looking at, in this case, it is 2, because we're multiplying 2 to each term. And our last variable here is n. So n just represents the term number that we're trying to find. So the term number that the question is asking you to find. So in this case, it's going to be 15, because we want to know the 15th term of our sequence. So now that we have all our numbers, we can answer that first example and find the 15th term of our original sequence, 4, 8, 16, 32. So we have all the, we know our formula, so let's just write it out again. a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r raised to the n minus 1. So now that we've filled in all the values for our formula to answer this question, let's just look at that and fill it in again, and this time we're going to solve it. So we found that the first term is 4, right? Then the common ratio, so times the common ratio, which is 2 because we're just multiplying each term times 2. And this is raised to the n minus 1. So we wanted to know the 15th term is what we're trying to find. So this is really 15 minus 1. So now we can really solve this thing just using a calculator super easy. So this is 4 times 2, just simplifying this, so 15 minus 1 raised to the 14th power. So this becomes 4 times 2 raised to the 14th power is, just plug that in a calculator, we get 16,384. And then 16,384 times 4 is equal to 65,536. And that's our answer. So, that, so this is the 15th term of this sequence. So let's look at another example. This time the common ratio is a little bit different. You might notice that the numbers are going down in this sequence instead of going up. We have this question, given the following sequence, find the 10th term. And then we have the sequence 1500, 250, 125. So since the numbers are getting smaller, we have to think about are we multiplying or dividing uh, each number. So, so there's a couple ways to look at this because divided by 2 will give you 500. So we can write this two different ways. So you can either say divided by two, or you could realize this is really also times one half. So, so I always like to use a fraction, but this is correct too if you see it this way. So we're just going to do it this way though. 
So 500 times 1 half is equal to 250. And then 250 times 1 half is equal to 125. You could also think of it as times 0.5. Whatever works for you and makes most sense to you. That's what matters. So now that we know that 1 half is the common ratio, now we can fill in the rest of our formula. So, so let's write out our formula again. A sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r raised to the n minus 1. So I write a both, you know, multiplication sign here, but not everybody does that. It all means the same thing. So let's fill in our formula. So we have our first term, right, the a sub 1. So first term is just 1,000. So this is equal to 1,000 times r is the common ratio, right? So the common ratio we found is 1 half. And then n is just the number that they want us to find, what number term they want us to find. So they want us to find the tenth term. So this is really 10 minus 1. So now we have everything we need to solve our problem. So let's just multiply everything at 1,000 times 1 half raised to, so the 10 minus 1, so this is just going to be 9 up here. So now we have 1,000 times 1 half to the ninth power, which will give us, it's going to give us a really long decimal, so let's take, let's look at this, 0 0.0019, let's write everything out, 0 0.00195312.5. So it's a long one, but it's okay. And now we're just going to multiply 1,000, or you could th see that we could just move this over one. One, two, three. So we multiply it by a thousand, we get 1.953125. And that is our answer. So the tenth term of this sequence is 1.953125. For our last example, again, we have something a little bit different. Now we have a word problem. Okay, so it says Conrad has $25 that he deposits in the bank. He continues to deposit twice the amount of money every month. How much money will he deposit in the 12th month at the end of the year? So, so there's a lot, there's a lot of words, but let's look at, let's look at what they mean. So Connor has $25 that he deposits in the bank. So that means he's starting with $25. So that means this is going to be the first term of our sequence. So now it doesn't give any other numbers. So let's, let's keep reading. He deposits that in the bank. He continues. So continues means we're going to have a sequence to deposit twice the amount of money every month. So twice, two times, twice is like two times the amount of money every month. So that means deposit $25 the first month and then twice that the second month. So twice that it would just be 25 times two, which would just give us 50. And then this is gonna happen every month. Then we're gonna go 50 times two, which will just give us 100, 100 times 2, which will give us 200, and the sequence keeps going. So what they want to know is how much he'll deposit in the 12th month. So they want to know the 12th term. So we know that n will be equal to 12. So now we have all the information. We have n, we have the common ratio, we have the first term, so we know we can answer this question. So let's write out our formula. a sub n equals a sub 1 times r raised to the n minus 1. Okay, so I always write out the formula because it's so easy to maybe for, to drop something by accident or forget what each uh, component of it means. So just a tip that I like to do. So now our first term, a sub 1 is our first term, which is just 25 times r, the common ratio, which is because we're, we're multiplying each term times 2, doubling that investment money every, every month. And now we have n, which is just the term number we're trying to find. So, which in this case is 12, because we want to know the 12th month, and each of these is a different month. So we're going to have 12 minus 1. So now we have everything we can find our answer. So we have 25 times 2 raised to the 11th power, just subtracting 12 minus 1. This will give us 25 times 2 to the 11th power is 2048. 
25 times 2048 is $51,200. And that's our answer. So that's how much you will be depositing in the 12th month of the year. So if you're looking for more questions just like these, check out the practice questions. The link is in the description below. And if this video helped you, please give it a like and subscribe. Happy calculating. Need more practice? Check out mathsucks.org for more questions. Link below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Happy calculating!